Good day to you dear students and welcome to class desk. Today in this video we are going to learn about unit 3 polymer chemistry from Samachir Kalvi class 7 term 3 science textbook. The learning objectives of this unit are recognize various types of fibers, conduct activities to learn the characteristics of synthetic fibers, list the advantages and disadvantages of synthetic fibers, differentiate between thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics, identify various types of plastics based on the resin codes, realize the impacts of plastics on humans, animals and environment, recall the different methods and hierarchy of disposing waste based on the 5R principle. Explore the complexities of bioplastics. Gather information about plastic eating bacteria and learn about glass and its types and uses. Polymer chemistry is very important in our day-to-day -day life. That means from the food to the tools that we use and from the cosmetics to the costumes, everything and most of the things that we use in our day-to-day -day life is linked to polymer chemistry. For example, when you get ready for school or you wear clothes, shoes, brush your teeth and take a school bag so whatever you are doing every day that you can relate with polymer chemistry one of the other tools that you use in your day-to-day -day life is a polymer in this lesson you will learn about polymers different types of fibers plastics and the ways we produce and how we should manage it so at first let us learn what are polymers in order to learn the word polymer you need to learn the word monomer a monomer is the basic unit of polymers in fact it's a building block of polymers these monomers bind together to other monomers to form repeating chain molecules through a process known as polymerization the product of polymerization is polymer you got it monomers may be either natural or synthetic in origin likewise polymers also natural or synthetic in origin you got it let me read the paragraph that is written in your textbook please listen what are polymers the word polymer is of Greek origin. Poly means many and mer means basic smaller unit. Polymers are very long chains made of repeating smaller molecules called monomers that are joined together by covalent bonds and the process is called polymerization. The diagram below shows how repeating monomers join to form a polymer here you have two diagrams the first set of diagram shows the monomers and the second set of diagram gives you the idea of how a polymer is all of you have seen pvc pipes that we use as a common water pipes it is the perfect example for the polymers the monomer and the polymer of PVC is given here for your reference. You need to learn and write it on your notebook. Okay. There is an activity for you in page number 43. Here you need to compare two different materials. One is an ice cube and another one is a polythene bag. In both the materials, there are larger number of molecules combined together. But does it mean that they both are polymers? Absolutely not. 
the water molecules in ice cube are joined together by means of a hydrogen bond you got it in polymers the monomers are joined together by means of a covalent bond as i already told you polymers can be classified into two different types natural polymers and synthetic polymers natural polymers are biodegradable and the examples of natural polymers are proteins carbohydrates cellulose etc proteins are made up of amino acids here amino acids are monomers there are 20 different kinds of amino acids present in the world so in which different types of combinations of amino acid monomers can be created that's the reason why proteins also are different types examples of protein polymers are dna enzymes silk skin hair fingernails feathers fur etc examples of carbohydrate polymers include cellulose chitin and lignin let me read out this paragraph because nothing can be vomited out from this paragraph okay just listen examples of carbohydrate polymers include cellulose chitin and lignin found in plants cellulose is made of sugar molecules and is the main component of cotton used in clothing chitin is found in the cell walls of fungi such as mushrooms and exoskeletons of insects such as crabs and spiders lignin consists of network of polymers and is important in giving structure to plants this paragraph shows how important a carbohydrate is carbohydrate gives structure to the plants carbohydrate gives structure to insect and carbohydrate gives strength to cotton when we think about petroleum the first thing that will come to our mind may be petrol or diesel however petroleum has a lot of other byproducts too detergents dyes plastics paints pharmaceuticals rubber etc are to name a few petroleum oil and gas are used to produce polymers that are known as the synthetic polymers or man-made polymers you got it synthetic polymers are man-made polymers produced by using raw materials from petroleum oil and gas plastics are synthetic polymers when oil and gas are processed to make petrol ethylene and propylene monomers are removed as byproducts we have already seen that polymers such as the polyvinyl chloride or pvc is made up of many monomers joined together ethylene and propylene are the building block monomers that make up different types of plastic the structure of propylene and ethylene are given here the first one this is propylene and this one is ethylene based on the nature of polymers polymers are grouped into fibers plastics and proteins so let us learn about fibers centuries back when there was no facility to produce synthetic fibers people used cotton and wool to make their clothes nowadays we use a lot of synthetic fibers all the fibers either it may be natural or synthetic they are all polymers fibers that are obtained from plant or animal source are called natural fibers for example cotton coconut fiber hair wool and silk but fibers that are made using raw materials from petroleum are synthetic fibers for example polyester acrylic 
and nylon. The major difference between natural fiber and synthetic fiber are the natural fiber is obtained from nature but synthetic fiber is completely man-made. The structure of natural fiber can never be changed but the structure of synthetic fiber can be changed. Natural fiber is very comfortable to wear but Synthetic fiber is not as comfortable as natural fibers. No chemicals are needed for processing the natural fibers. But in order to process the synthetic fibers, chemical is an essential ingredient. Natural fibers are environment friendly and it has its own natural color. But synthetic fibers are sometimes harmful for the environment and there is no glowing natural color in it. We need to add colors separately. The discovery of making synthetic fibers such as nylon, polyester and acrylic from petrochemicals has replaced the use of many natural fibers and it has become much cheaper than the natural fibers. Let us learn the types and uses of fibers. Number one, silk. Silk is a natural fiber and we get silk from boiling the cocoons of silk worms from specific species of moths. There are four types of natural silk. Mulberry silk, tassar silk, muga silk and airy silk. Most of the mulberry silk worldwide is produced in India. Silk is one of the strongest natural fibers and has many uses such as clothing, carpets and parachutes. I think I don't have to explain this once again because I have already explained about silk in my previous video. Please watch and learn. Number two, rayon. Rayon is a semi-synthetic fiber. Let's learn the story behind the production of rayon. In 1860s, the French silk industry was being threatened by a disease affecting the silkworm. The industry was about to close. At that time, the famous Louis Pasteur and Count Hilary de Chardonnet were studying this problem with the hope of saving this vital industry. At the same time, Chardonnay became very interested in finding a way to produce artificial silk. It's like an alternate way to save the industry. In 1885, he patented the first successful process to make a usable fiber from cellulose and he has been considered as the father of rayon. For the next 40 years, this material was called as artificial or imitation silk, but it took years to develop it as an industry. By 1925, it has become a developed industry and was given the name Rayon. Today, Rayon is one of the most widely used fabrics in our society and it is made in countries around the world. It can be blended with natural or man-made fabrics, treated with enhancements and even engineered to perform a variety of functions. Let me read the paragraph which is written under the rayon. In the 19th century, scientists were successful in producing the first artificial silk known as rayon. The first rayon factory in India was established in Kerala in 1946. Rayon is a man-made fiber, but it is not considered fully synthetic as it is made out of natural cellulose collected from wood pulp. The cellulose that is collected from wood or bamboo pulp is treated with several chemicals First, sodium hydroxide is added 
followed by carbon disulfide. The cellulose dissolves in the chemicals added to it and produces syrup called viscose. Viscose is forced through the spinneret into the solution of dilute sulfuric acid. This produces silk-like threads that are cleaned with soap and dried. This new fiber is called rayon. Some types of rayon are made from the short cotton fibers left on cotton seeds after ginning. Rayon is cheaper than silk. It can be woven like natural silk fiber and can be dyed in a variety of colors. It can be mixed with cotton to make bed sheets or with wool in the production of carpets and home furnishing products. Rayon is also found in sanitary products, diapers, bandages and girls for dressing wounds. The third fiber that we're gonna learn is nylon. Nylon is a synthetic fiber. Nylon was the first commercially successful synthetic thermoplastic polymer and it was created by Wallace Hume Carothers at DuPont's research facility in the year 1935. It became popular in between 1939 and 1945 because of the Second World War for the use of parachutes and rock materials for climbing. Nowadays, nylon has replaced natural silk in many textiles and has become one of the most commonly used synthetic fibers across the world. The main qualities of nylon fiber includes it is strong, elastic and light. It is lustrous and easy to wash. These qualities has made it popular for the clothing industry. We use many products made from nylon such as socks, robes, tents, toothbrushes, car seat belts, sleeping bags, curtains, etc. Nylon thread is actually stronger than a steel wire. Can you believe it? There is an activity for you to measure how strong is nylon. Take an iron stand with a clamp. Take samples of cotton, wool, nylon and silk thread of about 50 centimeters in length. First, tie cotton thread to the stand so that it hangs freely from it. At the free end, attach a CD as plate so that weights can be placed on it. Add weights started from 10 grams one by one until the thread breaks. Note down the total weight required to break the cotton thread. Repeat the same activity with the wool, silk and nylon threads. Well before you start doing this activity, you need to make sure that the threads are to be of same thickness. You can do this activity only if you have the weighing measures. We have no means of getting into school to get it done because of this lockdown. Otherwise, we could have done it at school itself. Now, let's learn about polyester and acrylic synthetic fibers. Polyester can be polycot, polywool, terricot, etc. Polycot is a mixture of polyester and cotton. Polywool is a mixture of polyester and wool. One of the very familiar form of polyester is PET, polyethylene terephthalate. PET or PET is used for making water and soda bottles, utensils, films and wires, amongst many other useful products. The main quality of polyester fabric is it is very easy to wash and 
it do not get wrinkled very easily we use woolen clothes in winter season but the wool obtained from the natural source is quite expensive but there are some clothes which is made from acrylic which are relatively cheap because they are the by products of plastics using acrylic we make sweaters blankets etc these sweaters and blankets are cheaper than the natural woolen clothes mainly there are two different types of test to distinguish between natural fiber and artificial fiber the first one is burning test if you burn a natural fiber it produces a smell like burning a hair but if you burn a synthetic fiber it produces a smell like burning a paper this is one of the main test and the second identification method is the microscopic identification of fibers there is one more activity for you in this activity we need to feel the fiber and write down the name of the fiber and state whether it is natural or synthetic fiber so you can try it out there is one more activity for you that is activity 5 burning a piece of natural fiber and a synthetic fiber please do not try to practice it at home okay so what we need to do is we need to take a piece of cotton cloth and a piece of polyester cloth and then we need to burn it when we burn the piece of cotton clothes it burns when it is held in flame on the other hand the synthetic polyester cloth will melt on burning this is the disadvantage of wearing clothes made of synthetic fibers especially when we are closer to the fire or when we are working in a laboratory we are not supposed to wear a synthetic cloth because in case if it cause fire it can cause severe burns because it melts and sticks to the body you all are in class 7 probably in the forthcoming years you need to practice a lot in the laboratory so at that time beware you are using a cotton cloth because of that, many of the laboratory are provided with cotton cord for those who work inside. There is one more very simple activity for you. Wetting a cotton cloth and an umbrella cloth. Can you use an umbrella made of cotton? Let us do the activity to see why we do not use a cotton umbrella to protect ourselves from the rain what you need to do is to take a piece of cotton cloth approximately 10 centimeter into 10 centimeter size and a piece of nylon or polyester cloth 10 centimeter into 10 centimeter in size from an old unusable untorn umbrella now we can ask four students to hold the four corners of the piece of cotton cloth and pour a glass of water over it then ask four students to hold the piece of umbrella cloth and pour a glass of water over it compare the effect of water on the piece of cotton cloth and umbrella cloth and record your observation in the notebook when you do this activity you can understand that the piece of cotton cloth leaks and the water droplets will come to the other end but the nylon cloth do not leak and the things inside that will be completely safe from wetting and when you make it dry 
you can understand that the cotton cloth takes a lot of time to get it dry while the umbrella cloth nylon or polyester dries much faster than the cotton cloth so from this experiment we got a clear cut answer to the question of why do we use nylon as umbrella cloth right now let's see the advantages and disadvantages of synthetic fibers the main advantages of synthetic fibers are they do not wrinkle easily they keep their color and brightness for much longer time than the natural fibers such as cotton they are stronger than many natural fibers such as silk or wool these fibers are stronger and elastic which gives it the properties to bounce the major drawbacks of synthetic fibers are they are not heat resistant and they catch fire very easily most synthetic fibers absorb very little moisture and do not allow air circulation making them hot and uncomfortable to wear synthetic fibers are made out of petrochemicals and last in the environment for a very long time and then they break down into very tiny pieces called microplastics which cause pollution to soil and water bodies such as rivers lakes and oceans now the pollution due to microplastics are discussed worldwide the next topic in this unit that we need to learn is plastic now plastic is everywhere if you're going to take a list of materials which are made of plastics the list can be endless plastics have many qualities in fact many positive qualities such as plastic is lightweight strong and they can be molded into complex shapes they are also flexible and waterproof and some plastics are even uv resistant which means ultra violet resistant plastics are also cheap and convenient for us to use now that you have discovered why plastics are so popular let us find out more about the different uses of plastics plastic is widely used in healthcare items plastics are used in items that are waterproof or uv resistant such as in umbrella and tarpaulin etc plastic is an ideal packaging material for a variety of modern requirements such as food industry cosmetic industries etc previously we used a lot of reusable syringes but that brought a lot of problems like some diseases have been contaminated because of the unsuccessful sterilization and reusage hence they tried to use plastics to make disposable syringes and they are succeeded in it now we are using disposable syringes worldwide to eliminate the risk of spreading diseases let me stop right here i'll come back with explanation to the rest of the chapter and the question answers in the forthcoming video so please do come back and learn so thank you for listening till the end of this video stay tuned and happy learning